city Dublin, the town I love so dear. But we're after winning two million quid, so we're off to Belvedere. Yes, it's goodbye to good old Arthur J, and it's bonjour to find Chablis. I am leaving my heart at the Haveney Bridge. Now it's Belvedere for me. I'm calling about your ad in the employment section. Oh, yes, 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 of course I am in ladies' hose. <laughs> what do you mean, am I wearing them now? <laughs> What do you mean, when do I wear them? No, how dare you? Listen, I will have you know... What? Well, I have never come across ladies' hose. I've never said anything like it. <laughs> ladies' hose. <laughs> now, let me see about this. Well, no, no, no. No, 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 well... I don't know. I don't know what to do. I just don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Ah, uh, now, look. Now, darling. 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 <laughs> there comes a time in the life of every married couple when they've got to make a few sacrifices. You know, we have had our Chateaubriand, and now it's time for the pot noodles. <laughs> no, 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 no. Now, darling, it is, it is, it is. I'm telling you. Now, now look, look, about those check cards. <laughs> I do. Oh. <laughs> Darling. Yes. Darling, you would be so proud of me. I what? have just saved you thousands of pounds. <laughs> everything was a third off, so I bought three of everything. Oh, <laughs> Pamela, darling, listen, I think that we ought to have a little talk. Really? About yes. what, darling? Look at this. I just uh, wanted you to see this. I couldn't resist it. Now, if I told you how much this cost, you would laugh. Laugh? <laughs> yes, but listen, darling, I know that you know that we've lost the sock business, and yes. you think that we have a little nest egg. I know, like, I know, because somewhere. you were such a well, clever well, little well, pussycat. No, 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 no. Well, well, the, 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 the truth of the matter is, and not to prevaricate things, and really, I don't, I mean, well, the point about it is I don't want to beat about the bush. And the point about... I'll get no, it. no, no, yes. please, come back. I've got, I've got to tell you. The point is, Pamela, that we are broke. <laughs> Stony broke. We can't even afford to pay attention. Oh, <laughs> I'm here in Dublin doing my college course and what happens with the landlord of the house I'm staying in ups and dies and the house has fallen down anyway but all the students living in it got kicked out. So here I am without a roof over my head and I thought what am I going to do? And then I thought what about my Uncle Anthony and his lovely wife Pam and their big house in Belvedere and just the two of them in it and how lovely they were to me when I was here before. So I thought they would be furious if I was not to go and see if I could move in with them, as would the Mammy. Because Mammy's always saying to me, you must call upon your Uncle Anto, because they were so kind and helpful to you when you were here before. So here I am. That's wonderful news, isn't it, darling? Yes, that's mm. wonderful. Mm. Great! I, I told them it'd be all right. It, um, it was a pity about the landlord dying, wasn't it? Yes. He took the easy way out. <laughs> Gone shopping with Toby. <laughs> <laughs> Gone shopping with Toby. Gone so oh! <laughs> Is it. And do you know when they made this film, he was actually only six years younger than she was, even though he's supposed to be like 16 and she's supposed to be like ancient. But that could be because he's short. My father said he saw him at one of those premieres and he said he could barely see him over the ice cream stand that was parked outside the pictures. Uncle Anto, come in and sit down. Brian, you make room for Anto, you big thing. Not really big. I only say that to wind her up. She loves a joke. We all do. <laughs> They're a barrel of laughs. You're, um. <laughs> You're, 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 you're all from, from Cork, are you? Yeah? Yeah? Uh, I thought you might be. Che Guevara was from Cork. Who? Che Guevara? The revolutionary? She, he was the one with Fidel Castro in Cuba. I read in the paper. Oh, I see. And uh, was, was Fidel Castro from Cork as well? Don't be silly. He 
You don't get people with beards like that in Cork. We despise beards. <laughs> Only Drew has a beard. Maybe that's where Castro got the idea from. I mean, the Dubliners were around in the 60s. What do you mean? The, 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 the idea for what? The revolution? No, the beard. The fair student movement. Liam's our spokesman, only he doesn't say very much because he's taken a vow of silence. Haven't you? Yes. We despise the ruling class that dictate our lives. <laughs> oh, you like yourself, Uncle Anthony. Yeah. The testicles of industry. No. No, silly, that's tentacles. <laughs> Money is the puss of society. Oh. We despise money. Oh, <laughs> we, we despise it. Yeah. Well, listen, tell me, I'm, I'm, what, what do you actually, what do you live on? My parents give me allowance. Ah, I and I get to use my dad's credit card. Oh. But that'll soon change, and it'll be fair shares for all. That's what Liam says. And then everyone will have the same amount of money that you do, Uncle Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> this was the Castle of Doom, the house for the most fierce giant in all the land. Inside lay horrors and nightmares almost beyond imagining. Slowly, Brendan drew near to the door at the side of the great gate. A feeling of fear gripped him. Something terrifying was lurking behind the door, but it was something he knew he had to face. Closer and closer he got. The rain lashed and the thunder roared. Suddenly, the door burst open. Help me! Help me! <laughs> We're going to have to lock that door. Oh, God. You have to help me, Molly. I'm being driven to insanity. You'll have to walk there. Where? <laughs> to insanity. What? Yeah, Ma says you'll have to sell your car. <laughs> I'm going to bring Anto into the living room for a little chat. And I don't want to be disturbed, OK? Come on, Anto. Maybe he's gone to insanity by bus. Where's this insanity place? It's out near Crow Park. How do you know that? Because every time Dad and Uncle Willie come home from the All-Ireland, Ma asks him what it was like, and he said it was close to insanity. <laughs> Well, you know, they claim to be a student movement. Well, they're the most immobile movement I've ever seen. Well, Aileen's not immobile. At least she wasn't when she was here. She was always so active and positive. Exactly. I mean, wherever I go in the house, I'm either confronted by the human dynamo or the walking dead. Just tell them to get out. Ah, uh, look, I can't, you see. Pamela likes Aileen, and she doesn't want to hurt her feelings. And besides, she is family. What else can we do, Molly? Do you know what you need, Anto? A pint to unwind. Why don't I get someone to mind the kids and I'll treat you to a jar in the Gettigans? Yeah, well, I suppose... Well, just one now. <laughs> I am living in a nightmare. <laughs> I am. I am. I am destitute. Mm. <laughs> oh, penurious. <laughs> am I right in thinking that you're referring to your present impecunious circumstances? Do you know what puzzles me, Anto? If you're so broke, why is Pam still spending money by the bucket? Ah ha ha! The one magic word, plastic. I thought so. <laughs> Personally, I'd say we're looking at five years for credit card fraud. Five years? <laughs> Nonsense! Don't listen to him. Now maybe, maybe you're right. As it's a first offence, it'll be probation and community service. <laughs> look, but look at the bright side. What bright side? You mean you can see a, a way, an end out of this endless nightmare? No. <laughs> no, but I just thought saying it might cheer you up. Because you can't please some people. You know, I cannot believe that my darling niece Aileen allowed this invasion into my own home by these, these two-legged cockroaches. Sounds like some of my customers. Near enough. Students. Students? God, that brings me back to me own student days. That must have been around the time St. Patrick was getting rid of the snakes, eh? Um, where, where were you a student? I am a first-class honours graduate of the University of Life. You didn't need your leave insert for that. <laughs> it was a time of vitality. You couldn't move in Dublin in them days without tripping over a student or an artist or a writer. Oh, I knew them all in them old days. Flann O'Brien, Brendan Bean. Oh, there was a writer. He could write a play. I say he could write a play before I'd finished pulling a point. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can't move in my house without tripping over somebody, except these aren't artists or writers, they're layabouts. He's not happy. 
That was the impression I was receiving. Yeah, and you know, their leader. Liam. Yeah, do you know, he hasn't got two brain cells to rub together. Do you know what he thinks? <laughs> <laughs> he thinks that Che Guevara was born in Cork. <laughs> That's stupid. Oh, exactly. He was born in Kerry. <laughs> <laughs> My brother knew him. His real name was Seamus Muel Shocklin Muivoira. <laughs> but of course, my brother always called him Shay. <laughs> and that's how he became known the world over, Shay Guevara. <laughs> Do you know, I never knew that. I am going to stay here. This is my place of refuge. What'll Pam say? I don't care what Pamela says here. I'm away from those dreadful people. I've always seen my humble establishment as a little port in the storm of life. A veritable oasis of tranquility, a noble sanctuary. Here they are. Come on, everyone. I just had to show them all the places that meant so much to me when I was here before. All the places my Dublin family call home. The shops, the streets, the cafes, the little hidey places where you think no one will find you. And you're here too, Uncle Anto, so we can keep you company. You and Molly and us, one big happy family. Isn't it brilliant? That's one word for us. Somebody shoot me. <laughs> You're not that lucky. Molly, Anto, I'm so glad you're here. How's your head? Um, you're just in time to hear this poem. Aren't we in for a treat? Liam wrote it. Sum up how he feels. You know what our movement is all about. Only he can't read it. I'm on the vow of silence. <laughs> I will never utter a single word until the people... Try reading it for him. You better sit down for this. It's powerful stuff. Listen, listen. I, ho I hope there's no shouting in it, is there? No. Oh, the no. power's in what the poem says. Oh, yeah. Liam's thoughts. He's so deep. So thick. Oh. <laughs> like this. Who? What? Why? Jean-Paul Sartre. Where are you now when we need you? Are you in the filth of hypocrisy? <laughs> the sewage of delusion. Do you know where you're going, Karl Marx? Have you abandoned us, Sigmund Freud? Or are you going to walk through that door and say... Hello, it's <laughs> us here! Darling, darling, you should have seen the bargains at the sales. They were simply giving the stuff away, weren't they, Toby? We came, we saw, we charged. <laughs> <laughs> Pamela, Pamela, could, 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 I, could I have a word with you in private, please? Well, could you make it a quick one, darling, because I've got this wonderful Paul Costello that I really wanted to I got a little prezi for Emer's birthday next week. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it wonderful? I knew she'd have to have it. <laughs> oh, am I interrupting a family gathering? Ooh, Aileen. You must remember me? No. Of course you do, Toby. People say of me, once seen, never forgotten. Really? <laughs> they do indeed, among other things. Tobes, you're in for a treat. You're going to hear the end of Liam's poem. Poetry, a soiree. That's one word for it. Oh, I love poetry. I will arise and go now. Why, where are you off to? Yeats. Oh, I know it. Yeah, it's the pub near Stephen's Green. <laughs> no, WB Yates, the Lake Isle of Inish Free. <laughs> I'm a bit of a poet myself. We despise dead poets. <laughs> See the fairies, how they fly. I often stand and wonder why, if they have wings, then why not I to sail away into the sky? Sail away. Sail away. <laughs> sail away. That's a song by Enya, isn't it? Pardon? You know, sail away, sail away, sail away. Which that isn't your song at all, isn't it? It's Enya's. Go on, we'll sing the whole song, won't we? We despise songs. <laughs> oh, goodness, is that the time I have to fly? <laughs> well, we shall meet again, we three, and we shall talk a poetry. <laughs> Adieu. We despise goodbyes. <laughs> <laughs> Months. You are, Aileen. I want to ask you a favour. Anything. I've got to go out tonight. I was wondering if you and your friends would like to babysit for me. <laughs> babysit? We despise babies. <laughs> oh, you love Dirk and Kurt and Tara. They're such great kids. Tell you what, we'll go over there now so the twins and Tara can get to know Liam and Bridie. That way it won't come as such a shock when you go out. 
Because that sort of thing can always affect a child, because I know, because when I used to babysit down in Cork, I used to always make a point to going in early so the baby could get to know my face. That way, if the poor little one woke up while the mommy was out, it wouldn't get a fright. You know what I mean? I mean, you can't have a revolutionary without babies, can you? Just wouldn't make sense, would it? <laughs> no, I don't suppose it would. Right, come on, up yet. There's nothing like the smell of talcum powder when you're dusting a baby's body to make you feel that all's right with the world and our future's in tiny but safe little hands. <laughs> Well, I'm afraid so. Absolutely. Completely and utterly. Without her. A... I'm afraid. Look, I did try to get another job of Pamela. Honestly. I mean, those two days that I spent as a traffic warden in O'Connell Street. <laughs> oh, my God, the threats. That man with the spanner. <laughs> but, you know, I really want to be in socks. It's what I know and love. It's what I care about. Oh! If only that phone would ring and somebody could offer me a job in socks. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so is it uh, through what I hear that your man Anto has got himself a new job? That's right. In the socks industry. What? You mean them French art films? <laughs> <laughs> Not sex, Mick. Socks. <laughs> Things you put on your feet. Ah. Oh. Pity. I remember the first time I directed Mrs. McEttigan and the lads and... <laughs> well, I'd better go and clean out me pipes. <laughs> what exactly is this job of Anthos? He didn't say. Because if I was anywhere in Dublin, you know, I could be useful to him. As you know yourself, I have... Uh, Awesome connections. <laughs> Madeleine, I think he definitely meant socks you put on your feet, not you put over your head when you're robbing a bank. <laughs> Molly, you do me wrong. I am a player in the great game of life. That is to say, I enjoy the interaction between people. But playing the game for me is about changing the rules. Which brings me to another point. How's Eddie keep? Why, do you want Eddie? Well, now, it just seems strange to me that a man who has everything including the perfect woman, should go off on a tour of the football fields of England. Premier League, Badler. Only the best for Eddie. You can say that again. <laughs> Badler, are you hitting on me? Now, Molly, you know me. Yes, I do. A man with his brains and his trousers. <laughs> Molly, I was never like that with you. You were like that with everyone. Well, not while I was going out with you. Now, you come on. You name me one woman that I... Well, you know, while uh, you and me were going out. Maria Faddle? Yes. Betty Pierce, <laughs> Betty O'Connor. Well, I mean, at the exact moment that we were doing something together. The Lucy triplets and their Auntie Brenda. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, I take your point. But I have changed, Molly. Only your socks, Badler. <laughs> well, that's enough talk about me. Let's talk about us. Badler, if you keep this up, you'll be counting your teeth. <laughs> Molly, believe me, all I want to say to you is... Well, that's me pipes cleaned out. <laughs> Now, where were we? Oh, yeah, we were talking about Anto and the changes in his fortune. That's right. Now, all we have to do is get rid of the parasites in his house. Cut as he cut them as well. <laughs> Me and Mrs. McEttigan had them years ago. They come in off of a dog that lived next door. We're talking about students, Mick. I mean, Aileen's all right. She's a bit naive. But Liam and Bridie and their movement, they're thinking of starting up a commune in Pam and Anto's house. I was in a commune once. <laughs> Let me guess. Kashmir, Khartoum, Kilburton. <laughs> uh, London in the 60s. Peace and love. Everybody working together. Everything was shared. And I mean everything. <laughs> I still have some of that outlinement somewhere. <laughs> All peace and harmony, what? Ah, it was meant to be. But there's nothing like peace and harmony for driving everybody mad. After a couple of weeks, we were chucking people out the window. <laughs> God, it was wonderful. <laughs> Mick, come here to me. You're a genius. I know I am. But what was that for? You have given me a brilliant idea. I'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs> see? I still have that certain air about me. <laughs> Yeah. Must be the ointment. <laughs> <laughs>
Say you will, say you won't, say you'll do what I don't, say you're true, say to me, get a life. Say <laughs> that me. Oh, oh. Hey, Matt. Yeah. Hey, Matt. Uh, where are the others? They had to go and seek spiritual regeneration. Liam seemed to be suffering terrible spiritual angst, especially after Dirk jumped on his foot. <laughs> it was just a joke. We were playing the game where you post a letter. Post a letter? And you go through all the things you put in the envelope. It's very funny reading. My brother Dinny used to play it all the time, my grandfather. You put the name and the address. But what do you put on the envelope? A stamp. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Don't even think about it. <laughs> Did you do that to Liam? We didn't know he had a corn on his foot. Oh. <laughs> Liam's very sensitive. I better go and see if he's all right. Luckily, he has the spirituality to rise above the physical pain. He says pain is just a meaningless emotion. And did he say that before or after he stamped on his toe? <laughs> before. I thought so. <laughs> Apart from that, we had a great time, didn't we, kids? Yeah. <laughs> well, you better go and see how Edgar Allan Toe is, and I'll see you later. <laughs> OK, see you later, kids. Bye. Bye. Lads, I've got to do some writing, then pop next door. So when I'm gone, you'll behave, won't you? OK, OK, yeah. Ma. Did you really stamp on his corn? Just like your dad, always putting his foot in it. <laughs> I'm afraid she's still a little bit upset. To be called such a thing and in my own home. Don't worry, my petal. I will go in there and deal with them. Deal with who? That leech, Liam. He called me a relic of outmoded materialism. Outmoded? <laughs> <laughs> me? I shall go in there and punch him on the nose. No need. I have a plan. And if it works... We should soon see the back of Cork's own Che Guevara. <laughs> You're just in time. Liam has ended his vow of silence and is now announcing the next stage in our revolution. I'm speechless. We despise silence. <laughs> yes, in order to gain the finances needed for our struggle, I'm going to sign on the door. Well, Liam, before you do, I've come to lend my support. You have? Yes. I want to tell you that I applaud your efforts to build a new society where everyone works together, where individual egos do not exist, where everyone works for the common good. Oh. So, here are your duty rotas. Duty rotas? Of course. Everyone working together for the common good. Tuesday, Friday, washes up after every meal and cleans the bathroom. Liam cleans the rest of the house. Aileen cuts the lawn. Wednesday, Aileen washes up after every meal and cleans the bathroom. Bridie cleans the rest of the house. And Liam cuts the lawn. You don't cut the lawn every day. You do in Belvedere Downs. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and any bit left sticking up that the more misses, you cut those with the scissors. <laughs> Brilliant. Isn't Molly just what our movement needs, Liam? You're our thinker and Molly's our central planner. Liam's philosophy in action. Working together and sharing the workers' chores. <laughs> we despise... We despise. What do we despise? What is this? He's doing your exercises. We're celebrating. They've gone. Gone. Yes, Aileen, that wonderful woman. I always said Cork women were out. Absolutely wonderful. She threw them out. Oh, yes, thanks to your brilliant idea. What? They said that they couldn't do such menial work like cooking and cleaning, and Aileen went ballistic. Started talking about her mammy and how her mammy had done that for 20 years in the trot, and how her mammy is the greatest person in the whole wide world, and if Liam and his short thought that they could insult the people who were the backbone of Ireland, then there'd another thing coming, and then she said that he was just pretentious and useless and used a word that I wouldn't use in polite company. God, shite. Anthony, please. And then she ordered them to leave. <laughs> They're gone. That's yes. great. <laughs> and everything is back to normal, except that Anthony has been such a tease about this new job of his. Oh, I'm not really being a tease. <laughs> yes, you are, my pet. Oh, really, no. you are. All he'll tell me is that he's to be general manager of a brand new company. That's brilliant, Ansel. Yes, and it's a huge, huge sock company with thousands of workers <laughs> and um, twice the money. <laughs> well, you fell on your feet. So, Anto, where is it going to be? Come on, darling, stop being so secretive. Tell me, where will you be going to work? Nace, Hoth, Dunleary. Saudi Arabia. <laughs> Dear old inner city Dublin, the town I love so dear. But we're after winning two million quid, 
so we're off to Belvedere. Yes, it's goodbye to good old Arthur J. And it's bonjour to find Chablis. I am leaving my heart at the Hapney Bridge. Now it's Belvedere for me. Yes, it's goodbye to good old Arthur J. And it's bold you're to find Chablis. I am leaving my heart at the Hapney Bridge. Now it's Belvedere for me.